Okay, so this will be a one attempt take, even though I did a few quite failed ones, but this is on purpose actually, even though it might not seem like one, because I'm not gonna say that I haven't jumped spontaneously into reviews in the past without any proper preparation, but this is the first time with the least amount of preparation and where I actually have no clue what I should actually talk about. Why on purpose? Because this is also my very first Chrome book. So a Chrome OS device. And for me, a Chrome OS device was usually nothing more than a laptop with a glorified Chrome browser. Actually, it's not quite the thing, but I would say things will come up as they will in the review. So let's just get into the design and build quality. And here at least I know what I should talk about because this is the Chromebook G1. It weighs about 1.2 kilograms, which is actually quite nice and lightweight. Build quality is, I would say, very nice i would say at least really good because yes there is a little bit of flex and the back is of plastic so it doesn't maybe feel super sturdy super solid but it definitely feels very nicely done very nicely crafted a few a little bit more rough edges but other than that i can't really complain it looks definitely very nice also very thin and elegant now here we have two times usb type c with usb 3.0 the headphone jack as well nothing on the front but as you can see there is a little bit of some angle so you can easily grip it and a micro sd card so that's pretty much all about that of course on the bottom we have some rubber feet a little bit of some raised also thing so it doesn't lie completely flat so it has some air ventilation now can you open it with one hand i would say yeah almost as you can see here so it does open a little bit but this is actually nice now Build quality inside also very nicely done, absolutely. Here we have the Bang & Olufsen speakers and here we have of course the display. We have a little bit of some bezel around obviously because it's not the most compact device. It's actually more of a lightweight and thin device than more so of a compact one, but I'm fine with that. The rest seems fine. Like I said, it doesn't feel incredibly premium, but I have no further complaints about that. So let me quickly zoom in a little bit more so we can talk about that keyboard. And I gotta say this is definitely a very good one because it as we can see, almost doesn't flex. A little bit of flex is there. It has backlight and it also has a very nice feedback. It's nicely dampened. The travel is nice and the overall layout is good. Of course, we have some little bit of different layouts compared to some Windows devices. So you will have to get around with that. And also a few shortcuts work differently. No Windows button and so on. So a little bit of getting used to time was there, but I definitely enjoyed the typing experience. Now about that trackpad, what I got to say here is I really like the functionality of Chrome OS and the trackpad. The trackpad itself actually is not the very best one, though I would say it's quite good because it has a little bit of a gap, one that you can maybe even see here. At least you can hear it. So you get a click even already on a tap. So there is some little bit of a gap behind it, but it's also a little bit more on the sticky side, but it does react very well because as you can see the browsing works out so nice. And what we have here, this is something that I actually wanna go into a little bit more. If we zoom out a little bit more, you can maybe see here the taps. And what I really like on this device is that we have three finger gestures what you won't see right now, where you can switch between those taps. And of course, with free finger tapping, you get the kind of middle button access. So you can, like for example, as you can see this here, just close the tab. And of course, you have the double tap as well for the right button. So I really like the functionality of that. And I would say really good, maybe even almost very good for the keyboard. And this is at least very good because maybe not the best one in terms of quality and maybe not so much in terms of grip because it's a little bit sticky, but the functionality is really, really great. Now, the next thing to talk about would be the display and I can't really show off much and I really don't want to because it's a 3200 by 1800 Chromebook and the resolution is very high and it definitely shows because everything is nice and crispy. I didn't really run into any scaling issues. For example, here, if you run into Chrome device, the only thing that I've noticed, if, for example, if you have an Android app that is only working in portrait, then it looks a little bit too small. But other than that, I have no further complaints and I really like the display. Colors are nice. It's also quite bright with 400 looks that I measured. I can't really do any spider testing here, but overall, I gotta say this display is totally nice. Absolutely very good. Now, what about that speaker? And it is not a touch screen, unfortunately, which is something that I was expecting, but okay, let's try the speaker. I gotta say, at first glance, I actually thought it would be quite a good one, maybe even really good speaker, but it turned out in so many cases when I just used it normally that I wanted more volume. The sound is okay, it is a little bit flat, a little bit on the thinner side, but still mostly just fine. But the volume... 
I would have wished for really more, but that's all I can say. Headphone jack was okay as well, but also nothing more. So let's talk about the performance. I can't really show you much here because I couldn't run any benchmarks and so on, which I usually don't even do anyway. So let's just get into the parts that are important, just for example, browsing. And I gotta say here, I have the highest version with the M Core M6. And as you can see here, super nice smooth scrolling and it's really reactive as you can see very responsive and i really like that the one thing that is a little bit weird if i do the free finger gesture to open all as you can see this no matter what always has a little bit of some slowdown and i don't think even something more higher end would do this i guess it's just not quite suited for that because overall the performance is absolutely there. everything feels smooth and maybe the best thing is and maybe the most important thing is that it supports android apps because at first i didn't really know what i should actually do with it because i need my solid explorer to get some proper support because you have a quite i would say limited browser uh, i mean file browser here but I really didn't find that to be so helpful. And what I was also a little bit disappointed by were the Wi-Fi speeds because it pretty much just transfers with about five to six, maybe seven megabytes per second on my AC Wi-Fi where usually any other Windows laptop gets to around maybe 50, 60 or even more. So I guess this is where the limitation shows that it still is more like on mobile OS than anything else. And about the battery life, what I have to say here, the charge time for some reason didn't sync on my dock and that's why it's missing, but it was, I would say, something at around two and a half hours, which is fine. And one thing that actually Chromebooks are known for, at least from what I got, is the battery life. Usually everyone says like eight, nine, 10 hours and so on. What I got was around five hours quite solid, sometimes maybe room to up to six. In this case, unlike on Windows device, I can't really deactivate any power saving technologies which could have hurt it. So this is at least what you should get. I still think I use my device a little bit different. So I expect people to get it maybe an hour more, but still let's say six hours. That's not that impressive. Maybe due to the high risk screen, I definitely think that it has a lot of to do with that. And maybe the high brightness because this display at least in my use, what I preferred was at 80% all the time. At, like I said, 100% is very bright, but everything below those F80% felt very dull to me. So maybe that has an impact, but still, it's not the very best one. But I also think that maybe it should be good enough after all. Because six hours is good, five. I would have wished for at least one or two hours more, then it would be super solid to get everyone through the day. But I guess it should be good enough. No. I guess the big thing to talk about would be the software now and I'm terrible at talking about software and you really never know what to talk about and it won't change today either because as we quickly go through the settings as you can see here on the sides we have network, bluetooth, people, appearance and you can also see this already here. So network, bluetooth, people, appearance. So you can change your wallpaper, see of course your homepage, bookmarks, bar, font size, the page zoom. Of course here on the device we have different devices for example the touchpad, displays, store management power of course search engine can be changed google play store this is the beta because i'm running the beta here on this and every android app worked out totally fine for me as you can see also open tabs and so on here for example you see all your apps i didn't really install all that many because i usually don't need that many but for example here flamingo as my twitter app and it definitely shows it is absolutely nice because it would have been okay this was just don't think this was a performance issue. This is the app caching. So this happens. As you can see here, apps work fine in terms of performance. A little bit of jitteriness is sometimes there, but I definitely like the overall experience. And of course, usually you will still use for Twitter something like the browser, but the option is there. And I also had, for example, my news reader app with Palabra, and that one works just nice as well. So I would actually say to bring it down to a quick point because if you want way more information about Chrome OS, there are, I think, sources where you can get more information. But just from my very first experience, without Android apps, I really didn't know what I should do on it because it was for me just a Chrome OS browser with Chrome extensions, which I really don't use all that much, but I couldn't properly do what I usually do. Once I installed Android apps and so on, and I just got my bare functionality, for example, like for also VLC player, so I could play all my local media from my NAS and so on through the network with Solid Explorer and VLC. And when I got access to my music and to my Twitter feed, to my Palabra, I could actually do whatever I usually do on a laptop. Of course, what you can't do is some heavy photo editing because I guess some Android photo editors are there and also for Chrome, but they are not quite as powerful as something on a proper Windows device. Of course, also video editing. Maybe some X like I think Cyberlink has a quite good one for Android, but I wouldn't really consider this to be that much of the. What is great, of course, also for school, 
um, doc documents, of course, Gmail and uh, or general email work, docu or, um, text editing, browsing the web, watching YouTube. For this, is it's done in my opinion. And with a high security factor because you all know the great functionality, quite often updates and so on. So actually to bring it already down to a point, just a quick thing, and then I will talk a little bit more of what I think of this device. So in terms of design and build, I like how lightweight it is. I like how thin it is. It could have maybe felt a little bit more solid, but that's not a big thing. In terms of ports, we are fine because I don't really know what I should use these ports for on a device like this. The display is really nice. Nicely calibrated, bright, high quality, top. Sound, I would have wished for a little bit more loudness, but that's the only thing. Quality was fine. The performance, just for the Chrome browser, really great. I really had no problems. Of course, switching between those apps, as you have seen with this kind of tasked out view, it was a little bit, not that fast, a little bit laggy, but if you jump normally through the test with the taskbar, there was no really issue. And of course, since this was the eight gigabyte version, multitasking was no issue at all. Android apps ran fine, so I really liked that. Battery life could have been better, but it got the job done. And then it's the overall experience that I wanna get into. Because what I can't really recommend is this version that costs around 800 euros, maybe something around $800 as well. This is just too much for a Chromebook because that's just too much of limited functionality. I really like the the idea of Chromebook though. And I gotta say, if you maybe take the $600 version or maybe even the cheaper one, because there is one at around 500 that has a um, core Pentium. I think it's a Celeron, I don't quite know exactly, 44 something hundred. And I'm not quite sure if that one is good enough in terms of performance because I've never used those before. I would say the next higher tier with the Core M, the Core M3, I think it was, that one could be the speed spot before I think Eight, four gigabytes of RAM should be good enough because Chrome OS seems to be quite a lightweight system with the Core M. This should perform still very well. So of course this version is even better because it has the better CPU, even more RAM, but I don't think it's necessary, especially for the price. So if this would have been priced at around maybe five, 600, which it is in the lower end versions, I think I could actually recommend this because all my usual stuff that I usually do on a laptop, I actually can do on this. Of course, if I need some photo editing, video editing and so on, I use my PC anyways, and that's why it's not for ne not necessary for me. If you are someone who uses his laptop for everything, this is not the solution. This is really something if you want something lightweight, where you can get all the normal stuff done with a really nice quality though, because this is, I guess, why you are also may maybe paying for more for, because there aren't many, from what I've seen, Chromebooks that offer a higher resolution than maybe 1080, and this one is actually almost even overkill, but 1080 is actually something quite rare, a good display, especially with a good sound, a nice build, a lightweight build, and all that is something you don't see that often. So if you are a fan of Chromebooks, then this one, so far, even though it's the first one that I've used, actually is recommendable. A little bit more expensive, but if you want, a better experience than on most of these Chromebooks, I think this could be it. I need definitely more and I definitely, once I've used this, I wanna check more Chromebooks, especially the high ones. Unfortunately, we don't have the Samsung ones that I would really like to try, but so far this seems at least in Europe here one of the best ones. That's where I'm gonna leave it, not making it any lang lang longer. <laughs> if you wanna know something maybe more that I can answer you or if you maybe want to give me some tips, do that in the comments down there below. Otherwise, thumbs up and maybe a subscription. Until next time, bye.